You routinely see experts overcomplicate getting wealthy because when a problem is too complicated, it then requires a professional to come in and fix it. But luckily, there's a strategy you can implement today from your couch that will beat the professionals at their own game 92% of the time. We're talking about a little strategy called index funds. Let's get into it. An index fund is simply a large group of stocks or bonds designed to mimic the performance of a particular financial market index. You don't need a fancy degree, you just need these three things. A few extra bucks to invest, literally $10 can get you started. An internet connection, and this is important, you need to know the difference between low numbers and high numbers. It's far and away my personal favorite way to build wealth. My second is crypto arbitrage. It's kind of like a Snickers. Tell me if you've heard this story. In 2009, he woke up in the same house he's been living in since 1958 and had his usual morning beverage, a Coca-Cola. As you recall, that year, the global economy was in shambles, turned upside down, practically burning to the ground. But this businessman was at peace, not because he was a billionaire, although that never hurts, but because he knows how markets work. On this particular day, a friend was riding along with him as he drove through town and asked, Will the economy ever recover? Warren Buffett took a sip of his McDonald's Coca-Cola, his second of the day, and replied, do you know what the best-selling candy bar was in 1962? Snickers. Do you know what the best-selling candy bar is today? Snickers. Of course, Buffett was underscoring the resilience of the US economy over the long term, and I submit to you that index funds are the Snickers of wealth building. From the outside, kind of ugly, brown wrapper, and boring. Are there two less exciting words next to each other than index and fun? But looks and personality are irrelevant. We want predictability. They don't eliminate market risk. They're designed to ride the market up and down based on what the index does. And you can buy shares of these groups for various financial sectors, the most famous of which is the S&P 500. So if you want your money to grow at the same rate as the S&P 500, instead of buying one share of 500 different companies, you can just buy one share of an index fund, such as Schwab's SWPPX or Vanguard's version VFIAX. Easy as that, you're in the game. Want to get in on the real estate boom, but don't have the capital lying around to buy a diversification of properties across the United States? Easy, just buy a share of Vanguard's real estate index fund for about 87 bucks. Maybe bonds are your thing. James Bond. For about 10 bucks, you can purchase a share of Fidelity's US bond index, FX Snacks. FX Snacks, I like snacks. From lumber and wood to blockchain to video games, there's an index fund for just about anything. So we have options and options are nice, but what makes them any good? Two things, I'll explain. In 2007, the McDonald's eating, Coke drinking Buffett famously wagered a million dollars to anybody who would take it that an unmanaged, low fee, boring, ugly, S&P 500 index fund would outperform the sexy, charismatic hedge funds chosen by a professional over a 10 year period. Silence befell the hedge fund community except for one manager who took the bet. Spoiler alert, the index fund handily outperformed the hedge funds. And therein lies what makes index funds such great wealth accumulators. Because they are unmanaged or passively managed, it means they have very low costs. Any costs associated with buying and selling stocks of actively managed funds gets passed on to you and me. So with fees as low as 0 0.04%, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.02%, that means for every $1,000 that you have in the fund, you pay 20 cents per year. Speaking of low fees, if you've gotten even a little bit of value from this video, gently tapping that like button would mean a lot to me in the small channel. It helps us know that we're putting information out there that somebody cares about. So in advance, thank you. And fees this low don't eat away at our profits, number one. Number two, Average performance sustained for an above average period of time leads to extraordinary performance. Now, a quick note on being average. Average, you say, ah, I wanna be rich now. If you're the type of person who can't stand merely matching a performance and has to outperform, I applaud your competitiveness. We're kindred spirits. I was just like you in my 20s and early 30s. The comedian Steve Martin was once asked on advice on how to become a millionaire. He said, it's easy. 
Step one, get a million dollars. Over the last 100 years, ending December 2023, the average yearly return of the S&P 500 was 10.5%, 7.4 adjusted for inflation. And according to JP Morgan, the average investor doing their own thing had an average yearly return of 2.9%. Now I know, you are not average. You're above average, clearly. You're watching this video. Are you a good driver? I'll bet you are, I'll bet you're above average you and the other 80% of the population. And that's okay, I'm right there with you. I too occasionally fall prey to the cognitive bias where we overestimate our abilities and our knowledge, which leads to poor decision-making. Luckily, you and I just do it far less than everyone else. So if an index fund's superpower is its dependability and stability over the long term, the engine driving it is its diversification. One share of an index fund represents 500 or 1,000, 3,000 separate publicly traded companies. So if one of these companies goes down, it barely affects the rest of the index. Now this has two profound effects. One, obviously, dollars and cents. But the other one's a psychological effect that you and me, everybody has. Here's what I mean, let's make a deal. I'll flip this coin, and if it's heads up, I'll pay you 20 bucks. But if it's tails, you pay me 20 bucks. Now, not many people are itching to take that bet, even if I sweeten the deal by saying I'll pay you 30 or 40, but you still might lose 20. This is called loss aversion. Losses loom larger than gains. A $20 loss stings significantly more than the joy we feel by winning 20 bucks. And because of index funds diversification, we're fairly well insulated by those big swings, particularly those big drops that tend to freak people out. Stock goes down, they freak out, they sell, and it's just a big downward spiral until eventually they're living in a van down by the river. Index funds are certainly not immune to big drops. It has happened, it'll happen again, but if you don't lose your composure, that's the time to buy, and I'll explain why in just a minute. So low cost, dependable returns, and getting into the game is easy with the proper mindset. Be scared enough to save for the short term and brave enough to invest for the long term. Open a brokerage account with a financial institution such as Charles Schwab or Vanguard. Both are great. I personally love me some Chuck Schwab. And oh, by the way, this video is sponsored by nobody. So now you're faced with a decision. What do you buy and when do you buy it? The when is easy. You buy it now, today. If today's a weekend, Monday, simple. If you look at the market, it's kind of on a downward slope, good. That might sound crazy, steal yourself for the loss aversion effect that's about to kick in. That money's gonna be socked away for years anyways. These short-term ups and downs in the markets, not important, don't care. What is important is that you don't miss any of the significant upswing. Take a look at this chart. Say you had 10K in the S&P 500 from 2006 to 2021. If you miss the 10 best market days, your returns would be cut in half and it just gets worse from there. Don't try to time the market. In fact, if the market's going down, that just means everything's on sale. There's a thing called dollar cost averaging. And before your eyes glaze over, take a look at this chart. It just means you regularly invest the same amount of money regardless of what the market's doing. If you wanna take that a step further, our friend Mr. Buffett suggests to be greedy when others are fearful. When, check. Now, what do you buy? For starters, if you can only afford one share of one index fund, I'd go straight for the S&P 500. No brainer. Now you've taken the first step and you're in the game. That's awesome. Both these options are great. And if you have some extra cash lying around, I suggest putting together a little index fund triad of US, international, and bonds. And it would look something like this. For US stocks, like I said, S&P 500. For international funds, you can check out Schwab's, Fidelity's, or Vanguard's. Then for bond index funds, there are plenty of options. A couple are Fidelity's FX and X, or Vanguard's VBTLX. And I think it would be disingenuous for me to recommend stuff without telling you what I personally own. So here are the index funds that I own. I love me that S&P 500 and I go with Schwab's on that. I also have VT Sachs, which is a Vanguard total stock market fund, as well as another Schwab US small cap. Some have better returns than others, but in the long run, they have all gone up. As always, caveat, caveat, seek the advice of a professional before investing your money. Here's an old Scottish proverb. Be happy while you're living, for you are dead in a long time. Cheers.